Hey, today I'm very excited to have Brian Schwiers from Salesforce with me. We had recently a podcast, which I thought was very interesting about the new revenue lifecycle management from Salesforce. This is a new product, uh, has a lot of news in there. That's why I thought in addition to the podcast, we should also do a little video where we talk a little bit more about the details, what this really is. So I asked Brian to come back and present us basically um, what the solution is with some visuals so that everyone understands this a little bit better. So and I would say I'm handing over to Brian and Brian, please go ahead and uh, show us what revenue lifecycle management from Salesforce really is and what it includes. Thanks, Frank. Great to be back with you again. And yeah, the, I think the podcast was was great and um, providing some visual and some demos to accompany it should be very useful to your audience. So yeah, so uh, we talk about Revenue Cloud and this idea of reimagining the revenue lifecycle management process on a single platform. And I am joined today by David mm -hmm. Beebe, who's our Senior Director of Revenue Cloud Solution Engineering. He will be presenting the demonstrations that go along with my slides. Uh, so we talked about this on the podcast that ultimately, if we think about high level, uh, what we're seeing is this new mandate that our customers are being faced with is they need to accelerate growth, they need to increase seller efficiency, and they need to improve customer relationship, but they all they need to do all three of those things while reducing costs. And it's from that perspective that we launched our new product, Revenue Lifecycle Management. With Revenue Lifecycle Management, customers can efficiently deploy new revenue models. So we support, you know, single one or one-time product SKUs, recurring revenue, whether it's evergreen or term subscription models, consumption models. We do this across an omni-channel approach so that buyers and sellers um, can collaborate in that transaction. Um, of course, we need modern selling experiences um, so that it's easier for both our sellers and our buyers um, to, to interact with the tool and become more efficient. And of course, we do all of this on our single platform that leverages Einstein AI um, and our trusted architecture. So let's introduce you to revenue lifecycle management. As I mentioned, the intent here is this runs on any channel for any revenue model and it's built in, it's got built in automation and AI. If we think about it from a architecture, we start with the Einstein one platform. There's the revenue cloud data foundation, all the core objects. Um, and then what we've built on top of that are several pillars um, that are persona based um, and can be deployed collectively or individually. So the system's completely headless completely composable as we spoke on the podcast. Um, and so what we'll do is we'll look at some of these um, in little demo vignettes. The first is product catalog and pricing. It's available now. It actually went GA in the spring release. Then we'll look at transaction management, also available now. Contract lifecycle management available now. And then uh, what we call dynamic revenue orchestration, which is ordering and decomposition. It is available now with the summer release. Um, and then finally, and we won't actually do a demo of this today, in, but in our end-to-end -end process is billing and invoicing. And that is a roadmap item. I'm sure, Frank, you'll invite us back to show you once we've got that out the door. Absolutely, yep. So let's start with uh, product and price. We've reimagined the product catalog um, so that we're focused on the persona of the product data manager. It's drag and drop, it's WYSIWYG. The intent is to have a unified administrative experience that's intuitive, that allows them to bring product to market faster. And it includes reusable and flexible attributes and components um, that allow us to allow our users to clone products and, and reuse as much as possible. Uh, the other is the persona of the price analyst. So this is the new pricing analyst screen. Um, and you, what you'll see here 
is again intuitive drag and drop capabilities focused on that price analyst persona with scalable pricing procedures um, and what I love is this idea of the waterfall so that as the price analyst is creating uh, their price rules and the buckets and logic they then can actually test it from here and see if their math is working and we'll see that price waterfall on the runtime later but for starters, we obviously need the analyst to make sure that it's right. Um, and then, of course, derived pricing and contract pricing are also available with the summer release. So let's transition to David and let him do a demo on product catalog and pricing. With revenue lifecycle management, we have completely reimagined the product catalog and price management. The ability to quickly and efficiently manage your products and pricing results in faster time to market, a crisper visual experience for your product and pricing teams, and confidence in presenting products and pricing to your customers. Let's take, for example, the product classification of a printer. You'll notice within that classification, we have a printer, a bundle, a jet printer, and we also have plenty of attribution to go along with that as well. Now, let's say we wanted to take that entire product classification and add it to our Laptop Pro bundle. We can simply do that under our structure by adding it under one of our existing components or simply adding a new component as well. This results in clear and efficient views of exactly what we're able to sell our customer and what we're taking to market. Now that the product has been perfectly designed, it's time to move to pricing. With revenue lifecycle management, not only can you quickly create the pricing procedure, we provide the capability of previewing and even simulating this procedure before you deploy, giving confidence with real-time testing. It's as simple as taking your pricing elements, such as attribute-based pricing or even derived pricing, moving them over into the canvas, and then defining what the input variables look like, what the output variables look like, and exactly what your full pricing procedure will result in. Yep, awesome, thank you, David. So the next section is how we reimagine transaction management and CPQ. And this is a screenshot of you would have we would have called quote line editor. We're now calling it uh, uh, transaction lines um, because the intent here is that not everything has to start with a quote. So yes, there's still the traditional CPQ flow of opportunity quote to order, but it's also possible that this transaction starts in a shopping cart or on a partner portal or in a high volume call center. And the question is, are you gonna create a quote or an order? So, so the transaction capability then becomes, um, you know, much more agile to meet your, your various use case needs. So modern flexible quoting and ordering experience. Here you see that waterfall I referred to earlier, but this time in the, from the persona of the seller rather than the price analyst. Um, and with that, let me turn it back over to David and uh, let him do a demo. We've shown how to move product and price management into the front office. Let's discuss our reimagined transaction management. We've responded to the market by delivering on a modern, flexible quoting and ordering experience, integrated price waterfall, seamless configuration, and advanced order capture. So let's see it. I'm the sales rep for Acme Communication, one of our existing customers. Now, Acme is interested in amending their contract to make some updates, so let's do that. I start by selecting the products I want to amend. Let's pick a date in the future to make that change. And that takes me into my omni-channel transaction management experience where we're acting as an internal sales user today, but this could be accessible through any channel that we provide. After speaking with my contact at Acme, it turns out they want to purchase additional laptops. Now, even though I did not include the laptops in this particular quote, it's as simple as going back into their contract, grabbing an asset that they already own. In this particular case, they want to update the quantity and they want to purchase five additional laptops. So we simply make that change. My price gets reflected. And we'll even see over on the left-hand side exactly what happened with the increase in quantity. Now that I've taken care of the increased quantity of laptops, I can also include net new items on this quote. For example, I know that my customer has never taken advantage of our laptop care package, but we can change that today. I'm simply gonna use this lookup in the right-hand corner to add the care package to the existing quotes. 
We can expand upon that care package and even make configurations through revenue lifecycle management. In this instance, I know that for their basic training, the security training is not going to be appropriate for them. Software training is going to be more appropriate. And so what we see is by simply making a selection on that attribute, I have an updated price of $26.99, which will be reflected back on my original quote. And through the enhanced price waterfall, we can see exactly how we got from the price of $29.99 down to $26.99 through a 10% attribute-based discount. Clear visibility to exactly how I got to my price. My customer is thrilled with what I put in front of them, so they accept the quote, and we simply create the order to get it out. Awesome. Thanks, David. That was great. Let's move on to the next one which is Salesforce contracts powered by AI. So we launched our contracts uh, product several releases ago, I think over a year ago now. Um, and what we did was in the winter release, we did a pilot. And with the spring release, we actually went GA with our contracts AI capabilities. Um, and collectively, they simplify the contract lifecycle management. They provide uh, collaborative redlining within Microsoft 365. And of course, it's all powered with AI. So with that, let me throw it back over to David for a demo. We've been very busy enhancing Salesforce contracts with many new capabilities, such as invocable contract actions, obligation management capabilities, enhanced collaboration with Microsoft 365, and even contracts AI. So let's see it in action. In the spirit of bringing new users into the fold of revenue lifecycle management, let's consider our legal team or other users in charge of clause creation. I've been tasked with creating a new net 90 payment term clause to use in our contracts. So what we're going to do is instead of typing it in manually, we're going to utilize the power of Einstein GPT to send a new clause through the trust layer and bring back a net 90 payment term clause that I can use to add to my contracts or make modifications if needed. It brings the clause back to me. We're going to add it into our clause set. Now you'll notice it brought most of it back, but did put in an X for the percentage of a penalty. Well, at our company, we put in a 3% per month penalty until the outstanding balance is full. Everything else about it looks great. We're gonna save those changes and I can simply add it to my clause library. Awesome, David, thank you for that. And then the last thing we're going to look at today is dynamic revenue orchestration. And this is exciting. This is completely new capability within Revenue Cloud. And the intent here is to take what we used to call advanced order management um, in CPQ and actually make it um, fairly, fairly comprehensive. So in here, you'll see order decomposition order orchestration, um, and then ultimately the fulfillment of not only the order, but the revenue. So, so the intent then is I've sold the customer product, I've orchestrated across, I've, I've decomposed it and orchestrated it across multiple fulfillment tools. We're communicating bidirectionally with those fulfillment tools so that once the product is shipped and been installed, the subscription can be activated, billing can begin, and revenue can be recognized. So with that, let me hand it back over to David one more time for a demo. Many of our customers sell a combination of products, software, and services that often have different fulfillment systems and activation schedules. While you can't abstract all of the complexity from the buying process, you do want to avoid unnecessary technical details during quoting while continuing to support the complexity downstream. With dynamic revenue orchestration, all of the fulfillment orchestration can be streamlined and automated through our intuitive design canvas, dynamically decomposing the commercial order to the technical fulfillment orders and generating the right orchestration plans to intelligently route to the downstream systems. So let's see it. You may recall that we sold additional laptops to Acme Communication. Through dynamic revenue orchestration, we can quickly and easily see how the commercial product lines up with the technical product, and most importantly, how the fields and attributes are mapped together for downstream fulfillment and decomposition. A critical part of any order fulfillment scenario is proper jeopardy management to alert fulfillment managers when assigned tasks are in jeopardy. 
For example, we have a rule associated with the contracted SLA of this auto task. If this is taking longer than expected, the system assesses a fallout rule to determine the next steps and the risk level. All of these components are combined to provide an elegant and efficient fulfillment plan. Imagine you're a service agent and Acme has called to get an order delivery update. We can simply use the fulfillment plan to get an understanding of what's already been done and identify any issues in timely delivery. I see the simple swim lanes that define the steps in the process, completed tasks, and any concerning items. In this instance, I see our shipping has failed, and this gives me the visibility to spring into action and to rectify the situation. Bringing this visibility to the front office is critical for timely delivery and overall customer success. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed those demo vignettes, and I thank you, and Frank, I thank you for allowing us to participate today.